And we look at the recovery from recession in the steel industry and find out what happened to the jobs as we join Anthony Wilson for Job Watch. At half past twelve, we find out what links a small town in the Scottish borders with Hong Kong, 10,000 miles away. The answer, Kashmir. Join Christian Diamond for the China Connection, our borderland. At one o'clock, we report on food production in Farming Outlook. And at half past one, we keep you up to date with the latest border news. At 1.35, our cartoon. At 1.40, Link, which looks at speech impediments. And at two o'clock, Tony Benn is the guest at Revelations. That's followed by our Sunday afternoon matinee. Programmes for Sunday. Now at border, we head for St Andrew's Church in Plymouth for our morning worship. And now we join Colin Lamont for the latest border news headlines. Good morning to you. The news this morning, a planning application which will affect the future of Sellafield nuclear plant goes before Copeland Council at Whitehaven tomorrow. BNFL want more storage facilities for intermediate radioactive waste. The company says if they do not get the go-ahead, they will have to stop reprocessing by 1995. A new £1.7 billion plant could not be brought into operation and there could be no further cutback in waste discharge to the Irish Sea. Three years ago, Copeland Council, the planning authority for Sellafield, put a limit on the volume of waste which can be stored in sealed containers at the plant. Now British nuclear fuels say that if more facilities are not allowed, the implications will be far-reaching and serious, not least for West Cumbria. Police in South Cumbria are appealing for witnesses to a fatal road accident just after midnight last night. 20-year-old John Douglas Hall from Barrow died after his car left the road and hit a wall at Goads Barrow near Alverston. An inquest opens later today into the death of a Merseyside man whose body was found in a car near Keswick. His name won't be released till relatives have been informed. Police say the death isn't suspicious. An inquest will open this morning on a Henshingham man who died while bailing hay yesterday. 28-year-old Alan Mason was found with serious injuries in a field near Sea Scale. Emergency services rushed to the field, but Mr Mason was pronounced dead by a local doctor. Police say there are no suspicious circumstances. Home Secretary Douglas Hurd dealt a blow to hopes of recruiting more police officers to help fight rising crime in Northumbria. His department has written to the area police authority saying no more money is available this year. Authority members are now planning to send a deputation to London in a bid to get the minister to change his mind. Police in the Isle of Man are looking for a woman missing from home since last Friday morning. They say they are concerned for the safety of Mrs Ross Woodhead, aged about 47, of Church Road, Port Erin. She disappeared in her white Renault car, B29 Man, and owners of garages and barns are being asked to check inside them in case the car is there. The Isle of Man, which lost its last two cinemas in April, is to get a new one, costing more than half a million pounds. The Palace Group, which sold the Strand Cinema and the Picture House in Douglas for property development, is to build the new one in the Palace Lido Complex on Douglas Seafront. A new centre is to be used in time of local or national emergency is to be provided in Berwick. The Borough Council is to spend £155,000 adapting property near the town centre. The Home Office is to make a grant of 75% towards the centre. Work is expected to start later this year. Police are investigating a fire which damaged part of a £5 million housing scheme in Dumfries. The blaze damaged floorboards and windows in a flat in Del Swinton Avenue in Dumfries. No one was hurt. That's the news this morning. Very good morning to you.